Hey guys, today I'm gonna start, I finally got the shop clean enough that I can kind of show you around it a little bit. And I've got a stack of material here and some uh, poplar over behind the camera that we're gonna turn into a pretty awesome set of kind of ultra modern cabinets. Smooth, high gloss. What we're gonna be using today, it's gonna be like a two-parter because um, my wife hasn't picked out the color of lacquer and it's just gonna be, I can probably build the cabinets and the boxes in two days, two evenings in the shop. Um, but to get it all sanded and lacquered is gonna be a more tedious process. So I'll probably bring you the building of the face frames using my little uh, DIY face frame table. Um, I've done most of my cabinets over the years with a Craig uh, like K2 jig and clamps. And now I use the Foreman, which I'm gonna get into all that. Um, it's a lot faster when I need to turn out bulk cabinets. And like I said, so I'll be using this quite a bit today. I'll show you what I'm looking at here right beside me. What I typically do, I've started drawing them up on CAD. I used to just sketch them out and then I can make my face frames and everything kind of falls into place from there. That's what I'm gonna to build today is I'm gonna start with the face frames. I got my rip blade on, so I'm gonna rip the poplar. Then I'll come over here to, uh, to the big dog, the 20 inch uh, extreme duty planer, and we'll, we'll surface all sides of the face frames. And then I'll go to chopping them up back here on the miter saw. This router table with the feeder fits in that same opening. Cause I, shops are never big enough. I don't care if you have a 60 by 120 shop, you'll find, you'll, you'll find a way to fill it up. So I try to make things modular where when I'm using the miter saw, it's set up and I can roll. But then if I'm making styles and rails or anything else, I can put this thing in there and I've still got a full 30 foot of feed, you know, through here. I've got dust collection and air running through the whole shop. I've got a place where I can sweep stuff here. I went ahead and integrated the Foreman machine right here. And that, that's a, you know, that drills my pocket holes. Um, then I got my Worth uh, edge bander. And then uh, my vac goes all the way over here to my edge trimmer. Then when we come to the doors, we're not gonna get into this in this episode because it's for the doors, but this is my hinge bore machine. And basically you put a grass, t uh, grass Tiamo hinge right there. And then we're gonna, you, you put everything in, it clamps down and then you, and it drills it. Then it comes up, you flip this down and then it presses it in. I'll get into why we use the Tiamos with these uh, frameless looking cabinets. Um, come over here and I'll just show you a door that has them just for, for fun. Any of these doors here have the, the Tiamos, which they're just a hidden hinge, but you could come real close in here and look. See, if you're, if you're picturing there's a door right here, if you have a cheaper hinge that doesn't have any outward swing when it comes, the, the corner right here would hit the next door because there's only gonna be an eighth of an inch gap. But see this, it doesn't even move over. If I, my thumb is stationary and it comes out and it opens right where it is. So that little detail is only in the higher end hinges. A lot because if they just hinge, that corner is gonna hit the is gonna hit the door next to it. So that's we'll use we'll use grass tiamos, we'll use Dynapro slides. Okay guys. So what I do generally is I look at my uh, my plan and I just most of these face rooms are gonna be one and one eighth inch because the uh, the, the hinges are one half inch overlay. So if I've got a door on both sides, it's gonna leave me an eighth inch gap between them. And that's what I'm going for. But at the tops and bottoms of the styles and rails, I want a little more room for grabbing and stuff. They're not gonna have any hardware on them. So I've got some two inch that'll go at the top and bottom, inch and a half on the uppers. So I'm gonna cut those first, it's just a few pieces. And then I got about 12 pieces of inch and an eighth to cut. I cut everything an eighth inch big. And then when I take it to the planer, I take a 16th off each side to get it nice and surfaced. So we're at two and an eighth right now. I'm gonna go ahead and rip these up and then I'll rip the rest of my list and we'll go over to the planer. All right guys, so now I've got everything ripped. We're gonna start with the two inch material. We're gonna do all the edges first because we gotta go two, then one and a half, then one and one eighth. And I've got the Wixi uh, digital, something here, but I go to one and two and one sixteenth right there. And is all I got to do is open that one. I've already closed the port on the, uh, on the dust collector for the uh, table saw. Turn this on. 
And we're gonna run these things through on their edge real quick. All right, guys, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start doing an upper, just kind of show you. It's, I'm gonna do this micro, micro upper right here. So all my uppers are gonna be 42 inches tall because I got eight foot ceilings. They're going all the way to the ceiling. You're, you got 36 inches to the countertop and another 18, 54. So you got 42 inches left for the upper. So I set that, and even if it's 42 and an eighth or you know, 40, whatever, it's, it's okay because I've set it and it's always gonna be the same, so they'll all be square. <laughs> And now I've got a two inch one because I want to hide that. I want to, I want to make sure there's nothing binding on my, uh, my dead corner. Okay guys, so I've cut that whole face frame out real quick. <clears throat> and now these are all my horizontal pieces, which will be the ones that I actually pocket hole. I'm going to go ahead and set this up and I'm going to, Now I do something a little funky. I get both my pocket holes there, and then on the other side, I'm just gonna put one right in the center. And the reason I'm doing this, I need to tighten that down a little bit, it's trying to walk. When I'm screwing into one and one eighth inch styles, normally this is not a problem, you got two inches. Um, the screws can actually hit each other because it's so thin. So I just do that on every one of them and I just make sure I orient them to where the two and then the one goes between it and they never they never make contact so it's just something i've had to figure out tighten that down a little bit all right so i'm going to do that to all of them real quick and then i'll take you over to the face frame table i'm just kind of Okay guys, so this is my face frame table. I'm gonna pull out some, uh, some Craig screws here to do this frame. Drop them on the floor. Okay, so first things first, I will get a little dab of glue. I've already got the, the first two verticals. You gotta, you gotta get, keep your head. The first ones don't really matter because you can flip them over. But after this one, I've got to make sure all of my uh, pieces stay the right direction. So I've got a couple story sticks that I just cut out of my drop to be just, they can just sit in here. They're not actually part of the frame. They're just going to hold up my, uh, my top rail. Okay, little dab of glue, little dab of glue. And right there. Okay, now... I gotta set these guys up. I got a little clamp that sets them exactly where I want them height wise. So I'm gonna set that one, open it up. I'm gonna close this one. I'm gonna close this one. I'll open this one and I will raise it up. So it goes right there. And then I get them into position, which this is not right. There's where it should be. Okay. And okay, normally I keep them square, but this thing will square itself. And you see those clamp, and these two are shut off right now. So once I'm set up, this actually saves you a ton of time over the uh, the Craig clamps. But at this moment, it takes me a minute to get going. Okay. Okay, so what you got to keep in mind now, though, I've got my picture, but I am actually looking at this from the inside of the cabinet. So, as of right now, I'm inside the cabinet, and this is flipped, or it actually goes this way, because my wall's over here, because my next one's a microwave, which is also 30 inches 
So it will go here, but it will not go all the way to the top. In fact, it will be 15 inches down. Okay, so you can kind of see the close-up of how these clamps work, and Craig makes a face frame table like this that retails for around $4,000. I actually got the idea to build this off of an Izzy Swan video um, on YouTube, and he linked all the uh, parts and hardware. You can see those V-groove bearings that it's sliding on down below there. And I think before I put, started putting drawers and hardware on this thing, I had it functional for four hundred dollars just you know it's sweat equity you know i didn't want to spend four thousand dollars on something i don't use every day and this thing functions actually better than the craig table because it only has two actuating clamps and there's a lot of times i don't usually use four of them but a lot of times i need three so it is the handiest thing when i'm doing bulk face frames that i can just slam them out if it hadn't been for the three-dimensional ones i'll get into in a little bit on the lowers I could have done the face frames for this entire kitchen in an hour, but the lowers ended up taking a good bit longer. Um, like I said, I'll get into that in just a minute, but you can kind of just see how the process of these uppers, we just slam them out really quickly. Um, I think maybe I had 45 minutes in all the uppers. Okay, guys, um, the wife kind of threw me for a loop today. We, uh, we went to Ikea yesterday to just look at some furnishings for the Airbnb, just look around. Um, it was on Black Friday, so that was a experience in itself so what ends up happening i'll bring this face frame over here so this will be a face frame this is where the sink will go and you see these recesses it's kind of like a three-dimensional face frame it takes a lot more effort obviously you can see the uh all the pocket holes in the back and my number one helper here but i had to kind of reconfigure everything all my all my cut pieces everything was different just for the lowers which is like you know five or six boxes but it's taking me some time i should have been done with this a while ago so I probably won't get all of my boxes built today. But what ends up happening is I have to take one piece of two, two inch face frame, a couple one and a halves, and then I just go to that Foreman jig and I, I, I do this. I could shoot this together with nails, but I actually loaned out my, uh, my battery nailer to one of my trim carpenters. And this is honestly stronger anyway. I'd rather it be beefy. And then the top one is just an L like so. And then the, the granite just comes out, and it gives me a, a perfect place to hide um, an LED strip, too. So it's just really going to... I've already got all my upper uh, face frames done, and the, main, the biggest lower, but i still got like uh, three or four more to go. So I'm going to keep going on that right now. Okay, so basically these recesses, while they're going to give me the coolest look possible, they just created a lot more effort. The, the lower portion went together normally. But then to put those channels, um, it's just a lot more screws, a lot more time, a lot more, you know, pocket holes in general to, you know, prepare. However, a lot of the high-end Italian cabinets and Italian kitchens that you're seeing now use an extruded aluminum piece. And I really feel like this is probably stronger than, than that version and also a lot less expensive than just trying to integrate you know, extrusions and everything into a, an otherwise wooden cabinet. So I think this is going to end up being a really, really positive way of um, getting that exact same look and giving me a really cool place to hide an LED light. So you can just kind of see, I mean, you can see my knuckles turning white here because I'm not using a clamp because it's kind of hard to clamp a three-dimensional shape with a, with a face frame clamp of some kind. So it worked, but it was, uh, it was, a, it was a bit tedious. Okay, so I just want to give you guys kind of a, a little bit more of a picture of, of the significance of this little channel. A lot of your like really high-end Italian like glass face cabinets will have these and it'll be an extruded aluminum piece. I don't really see the need to do it that way because when I spray this all with, uh, you know, and I also another change, we were going high gloss, now we're going matte finish. Like I said, we looked them both over in the, in the, in the store to just see which finish would be, you know, more durable and more attractive for the look we're going for. And we're going to go matte. So all this is matte. This is all going to kind of recess into the background because you can picture a door right here. 
This is obviously just a piece of plywood. It'll just come up a little bit so you'll be able to you know, reach up here and your finger, like a finger hold. Then the drawer will hang down like this. And I mean, obviously it'll, it'll stop right here. So it'll be, you'll grab it the same way. But this gives me a really slick place to hide an LED. So it'll just be light coming out of here. You won't see where it's coming from. Also mount it right to the bottom of the countertop. The countertop will sit like so, you know, and uh, we'll hide a piece here. And uh, it's just gonna be super cool. It's a really neat look. I'll kind of, uh, I'll show you a picture of, uh, of one at the, at the big house we're doing. Just kind of, it, this, this seems like a lot of busyness right now, but it'll kind of blend and fade into the background once all the doors are on. So anyway, like I said, more work, but I got to do this about four or five more times now, and then I'll be ready to build the boxes. So you can kind of see that, you know, this process, not being able to do all the face frames on the face frame table because of that three dimensional aspect, it slowed us down, but it's really going to pay off in the end since we're trying to make this Airbnb really pop in the photos. We want, we want excellent reviews because we're really going for a, a high end Airbnb experience. So that's, uh, that's kind of the purpose of what we're doing. Kind of really just trying to really make these cabinets special. Okay, guys, me and Jake are going to call it a night. Um, not going to get the boxes built. I was wanting to get everything done, uh, the boxes and everything, in about eight hours. I've got about six hours just in the face frames because of all this three-dimensional. Um, but it's going to be totally worth it with the LEDs. So just to kind of give you a quick tour around the uh, kitchen, if you can remember what it looks like, I may put a picture of it. i got a door going into the garage, then um, a lower to the right of the stove, then the stove will go here. And then if I can get around him, he don't fall over. Uh, we go around the corner, sink, dishwasher in this opening here. Then I've got this lower. And uh, then I've got my fridge box that goes all the way to the ceiling. And then I've got my coffee bar, uh, you know, my beverage station over here. I said we'll have an island right out here that I have not built yet. It's going to have that super cool sliding, um, sliding table that comes out of it. And then um, there'll be uppers over, there'll be one upper and some shelves here and uppers all the way around. So, I mean, kind of, you got to be able to envision this stuff, but I know I did all of it with a Foreman jig. The Foreman jig is awesome. It's about $400. Um, the Craig K3, K4 jigs, whatever, they're pocket sized. If you don't have a ton of room, you can use them. I built entire ca kitchen cabinets, cabinets for a whole house with a Craig 2, K2 jig for years. And it's plenty of tool. Um, just a little bit slower. Uh, but yeah, guys, uh, my next video on these cabinets will lacquer these face frames. The wife's got to put color picked out. Um, we'll build the boxes. All bo the boxes are going to be all melamine, so I won't have to do any painting on the insides. Um, and it's gonna, they're going to come together super nice. Then we'll do the doors and hinges and all the fancy grass Tiamos, the grass uh, Dynapro slides, all the fancy hardware that makes the cabinets really nice. And uh, we also have some eco finish videos coming where we've finished an ICF pool with eco finish. Haven't got all of the hardware hooked up yet to get it uh, really singing. So I want to get all that done and bring that to you. It's the pool with the glass wall. So uh, it's going to be really, really slick. I will see you guys then.